Hi everyone, Nilay Patel here. I am the owner and designer at Silver Silk and more, and I want to welcome you guys to Tuesday Toots. I will be making a fabulous leather and knitted wire bracelet tonight. It's going to be a cool little wrap bracelet. I'm going to be using Softflex wire. Um, this one's not your typical medium size, actually. We're going to get into the super fine, small, it even resembles to me what would be uh, beading thread. And so I have never used this before, but I am excited to tonight, and I think it's going to make for a perfect technique. We're going to be using Capture Chain in the copper, anti-copper color and some dark um, two millimeter leather cord. And we're going to use the Softflex wire to wrap it into um, a bracelet all together. And we're going to be using some terminators and end caps to put it all together. So should make for a very fun project. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Hey everyone. So I have my board all set up and I'm ready to create a sketch for this evening. So let's get started. Um, I think I want my guy's bracelet to be fairly on the simple side, but I've got some really cool materials that I've worked with, including the soft touch, very fine. I've not used this very much at all, but it is super, super thin. Um, it reminds me of a uh, beading thread almost, and so this will be the perfect thing to sew our design with. But essentially, our bracelet is gonna look pretty streamlined, I think, for tonight. Um, this will represent the cord, kind of get a thicker cord here going. Now my sketches are just, again, another roadmap to get the design sort of put together. It doesn't have to be super accurate in its drawing. And then let's see, I'm going to draw my silver silk chain just below it. So what we can do to note that is just put some little X's here. So the idea here is that we kind of have a piece of leather on each side of the leather cord. And we're basically gonna try and sew the um, what's it, the capture chain in uh, between it. And so we'll have our and I think we can. what we can do here is put a loop over here with the leather cord, put a little terminator on one end of the capture chain. And then on this side, I think what we can do is put a triple end, a triple strand end cap. with our chosen clasp. I don't really know what our clasp will be, but we'll figure out something. Um, and then we're gonna use actually our soft flex, soft touch to sew around and around to get our components all stitched together. This will be really cool, I think. Of course, my sketch again doesn't really reflect um, the final piece per se, other than just a graphic representation of what I think I'm going for. So at least it kind of helped me think through what my techniques are going to be for um, putting this together and, you know, kind of, again, just a roadmap. Cool. Okay, so with this in mind, um, the first thing I want to do is start to put together my chain. So here I've got the beautiful antique brass, uh, excuse me, antique copper, which has a gunmetal chain inside. And this is just the capture chain, but it is super cool and very, very much, um, I think, really gender neutral, in my opinion. Um, I think a guy could absolutely wear this, as well as our ladies. But I am going to go ahead, well, actually, I have to kind of think through. If I'm going to use this beautiful cord, this soft, soft touch, maybe I want to go ahead and hide some of my cord inside of it. Um, and to do that, what I think I'm gonna do is stitch, or just basically put my wire right through it, just like that. I may even, I'm gonna see if actually I can put a little crimp to kind of help put it in place. I don't know if it's gonna knot very well, I could try first, and then if it doesn't knot very well, oh, it looks like it might. You can always kind of fall back to your crimp, but that actually works pretty well. Um, 
Again, not surprised because Softflex is pretty awesome. They have such flexible wire. So cool. Well, I don't need to use a crimp after all. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually, I'm going to fold this down and then I'm going to attach my four millimeter terminator here before I trim it, I think. That'll just make it extra secure. So to do this, you simply just put your terminator right over the end of your capture chain. And all I'm gonna do is just give it a slight press with my regular um, nylon, uh, regular chain nose pliers. And then I'm gonna go in with my nylon jaw pliers and uh, give it a good squeeze. That way, my end cap there isn't scratched up or anything uh, whenever I press it down really good. But then you could just kind of trim off that end. And here I've got a working thread. So that takes care of that. Um, as far as the leather cord goes, I just actually got this from Etsy. But I mean, Leather Cord USA, Jesse James Beads, you can pretty much source this anywhere. Um, size wise, this is going to be, I believe this is the two millimeter. So I probably should note that in my sketch here. So this will be two millimeter leather. Cord. and it's round leather cord perfect so you can kind of measure to see how big you want your bracelet to be but it appears as though I don't think I need very much to make it a size that fits me so what I'm gonna do is actually just cut about yay much this is probably I don't know maybe a foot and a half give or take I always like to eyeball it and then I'm just gonna fold it in half. And this will give me the loop I need on one end to um, make sure that I can put a clasp on it or clasp it to it later. This side will actually have my clasp on it. But to sew this is pretty easy. So I need to cut myself with some cord. I always like to have a lot of extra just in case because I don't like running out in between my projects. So maybe that might be enough. And what's great about this particular soft touch and as thin as it is, surprisingly, I don't think I need a needle to be able to work this. Um, what I can do is just kind of braid it, pass it through the knitted chain. Um, close by, I probably will go like every two of the ball chain and then braid around so i'm going to just keep doing that back and forth basically and that'll kind of tie everything in now at the top here i probably want to go around a couple times just to make sure it is secure so let me go ahead and um, actually i'm going to go from the bottom up because that'll be the most comfortable for me so I just passed my cord up from the bottom. I'm gonna find an area to go up through here. And go back in. Oops, let's get some of this stuff out of the way. In fact, you can go ahead and cut your chain so that you don't have any extra chain out here. Um, I think I have my, I'm gonna use these cutters. I think I misplaced my other one, so we're sort of at the mercy of whatever tools I can conjure up here. <laughs> cool, I'll get that stuff out of the way. All right, now you do wanna be consistent with your braiding because you don't want anything to kind of be misaligned or kind of fall wherever it doesn't need to. But, um. Otherwise, this process is pretty easy. So it looks like I went from the bottom. So let's see. Probably pass by through that one more time. And I should exit kind of where my last stitch was. That way now I have it nice and secure.
So yeah, now I'm just gonna go through all of this as best as I can and as quickly, because these projects are definitely meant to be quick, fun, and easy. And again, if you are unfamiliar, or uncomfortable rather, um, working with this particular chord by itself, I would advise using a needle or even a beading awl to kind of open up some of the the holes there. But I think if, I mean, it's going pretty smoothly for me, so it should be all right for you guys. But now I'm just kind of braiding and sewing as I need to, so it's super easy. And very meditative. And of course you can make the gaps as small or as large as you want. Um, if you love the detailed braiding, maybe you even pick a different colored beading wire and um, do really tiny stitches in between. That might be for a cool look. coming together pretty well. Perfection. You could probably use a macrame board if this will make that process easier. Um, to me, I kind of like to freehand everything just because it's a little bit more flexible for me to work that way. Um, and I like to pick up everything, kind of check it out twice, three, four times, put it back down, and then continue to braid as I need to. So for me, I think a macrame board would be a little bit uncomfortable, but certainly, again, if you guys are used to using it that way, that might be a good way to go. But otherwise, this is, it gets easier as you go further down into your design um, to braid this and to sew it. Because really you get kind of into a rhythm and it just becomes super meditative. Okay. Now, a few points about soft flex wire. I absolutely love working with it. I, Again, haven't used this thin one um, very much, but I thought this was going to be the perfect project for it. It almost reminds me of Fireline um, because of how thin it is and super handy. I'm so glad that they have this in stock. Uh, and it's it can be crimped. Um, it can definitely be tied, as we just found out not too long ago. And super versatile. super strong too like I keep pulling on it but then I you know I, I don't have to worry about it breaking or anything Let's see. okay I went ahead and reached the end of my stitch work here as you can see it all came together perfectly in alignment and it looks really good whenever I put it on myself so I think that's gonna be a very cool bracelet so to finish out my end here what I think I'm going to do is try and tie off the end. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, so I'm going to try and experiment together. Maybe if I just insert it down, maybe give myself a loop. Maybe I could tie my wire onto my loop. Now, initially, I have a triple end strand uh, tip. What am I trying to say? <laughs> triple uh, strand end cap here. Gosh, that's a hard word. Uh, and I think I'm gonna secure all of it into that. And I should be able to hide my knot pretty easily. So I just uh, tied it very tight. I don't think I need a crimp on it. I could put one if I don't feel fully secure, but I think by the time I um, tuck everything into that end cap, it should hopefully all come together pretty well. Let's see, maybe cut it off all right there. And this is the custom end cap from Silver Silk. 
what it is is it's got teeth inside of it so whenever you're securing this you really don't need any extra little tidbits like glue or special tools to really secure this it just simply tucks away inside of the end cap and you can pretty much just crimp it and you're good to go so i'm just going to use my nylon drop pliers give it a good squeeze looks nice and secure to me i have the logo side up on the stitch side that looks really good so that basically completes my bracelet now i just need to put on a clasp of choice so I did manage to find a clasp. Um, I thought this was a really great industrial size clasp, I think, for a guy's bracelet. The sad thing is, is there's no really great way to connect this big O jump ring to this smaller loop here. So I just found a jump ring um, that I think I'm gonna attach it with and call it good. Otherwise, I don't think it looks bad at all. So I'm just gonna connect that. I'm gonna need two pliers here. Here we go. Now we have a complete bracelet. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that project. I had so much fun making this design. Um, I think the technique ended up being super fabulous and um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will try it out. If you wanna find more of these tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube. On there, there is a ton of videos um, to all kinds of different techniques and components that I use from my favorite companies along with Silver Silk. And um, don't forget to check out Facebook. So if you go to Facebook, um, please type in Silver Silk and more and you'll find my company on there. And we have a little group, you guys, called the Silver Silk Silkies, S-I-L-K-I-E-S. And we're just a fabulous little community um, of creators and we've been taking some of the techniques that I've been teaching you and actually have created into their own style and technique and it's always always inspirational to me to see those and to share them with you guys so check it out until the next Tuesday toot which will be every Tuesday at 5 30 in the evening central time here on YouTube um, where we create fun and fabulous and fast designs using silver silk. So I'll catch you again then. And until then, have a inspirational evening. Good night.